I am not Paul Randazzo. He's not here. He's the event supervisor. Um, I've coached this event though, so I've coached this event forever. I, so I'm, I can give you any answers you want about coaching questions. The test questions, I can only tell you what I know from just the kids doing it. So but I can give you anything you want to know about coaching. This is Paul's PowerPoint though, so this is what he wants to say to you guys. Okay, let's start. Okay. That was wasteful. Okay. So, you guys already have your team set? Okay. Um, don't be panicked because I have sent one kid in. If you lose a kid, just work with the other kid. I have sent one kid in at a time and they did fine. Um, only pencils. You're allowed to bring a chart. Eight and a half by 14. Both sides. And 20 stations, about 100 questions. And it, will, it won't be even, even. So there may be one station where there's six or seven questions and one station where there's three or four. So, it, but they will all be, they should be able to answer them in the time limit, even though some will have more questions. Um, okay. Okay, so these are the things the kids need to know. They need to be able to look at a rock, a mineral, say this is such and such. They should know the uses for the rock or the mineral. Um, physical attributes, especially when you're getting into the minerals, they'll need to know things like the cleavages, the hardnesses, uh, fracture. There's little, the rocks are a little less to know like that because rocks aren't consistent across every piece of granite. Special properties, if it fluoresces. Um, when you drop hydrochloric acid on it, does it fizz? Uh, is it a good conductor? Is it a good insulator? Those are the type of things that you need to know. And this year we're going to have a sedimentary rock and fossil emphasis. Again, the word emphasis is kind of misleading. They're not going to be weighed any heavier than any of the other rocks and minerals, so study them all. We're just, every year he rotates in either igneous or sedimentary or metamorphic. This year he's rotating in some extra things with the sedimentary. Okay, so don't overstudy sedimentary. It's just those are the special ones this year. Okay. Descri okay, this, no... Know this definition, okay? Make sure your kids understand what a mineral is. All, all quartzes have the same properties. They have the same hardness. They have the same cleavage. They have the same structures. Not every granite looks like every other granite, okay? Because it's, it's a varying amount of minerals that go in to make up a granite. So they are not the same across the board. Rocks are not the same across the board. Minerals, every mineral, every granite, every quartz will have the same physical properties as every other quartz you find. That's, they gotta know. Everywhere it is, every, every quartz is every other quartz. Streak, hardness, specific gravity, luster, crystal habit, form, color. Streak, in your boxes, if you've ordered the kits, there should be a small porcelain plate. When you scratch your mineral on that porcelain plate, like hematite will streak a blood red color. Every piece of hematite will streak a blood red color. Hardness, same thing. It's on the Mohs scale, which is a scale of relative hardnesses, which the guy who invented it just decided that these 10 rocks and mineral, I'm sorry, these 10 minerals are easily found. Any geologist could have these 10 minerals. And it's just basically one is softer than two, three. That's not a absolute number. It's a relative number. Know the Mohs scale. Have them especially know, I think we have six, I think we have the first six minerals, no, seven minerals on the Mohs scale are included in your list. So they should know 
that not only is quartz a seven on the hardness scale, quartz is the seven on the hardness scale. Okay, um, calcite is three on the hardness scale. It is the three on the hardness scale. So know, have them know their hardness scales. Specific gravity, this is something that I'm, I'm not sure because I asked my kids and they said that they didn't see any. He hasn't asked them, they, they don't need to know the specific gravity off the top of their head, but put that on their chart. Don't waste your time getting them learn specific gravity of every mineral because they're not going to remember. Put that on your chart. Um, but make sure they know it's heavy, it's light. Uh, it's heavy for its size, it's light for its size. This year you have barite in the minerals, and barite very much resembles some shirts, um, even some kaolinites, and then you go to pick it up, and it's super heavy. That's the type of thing I have to know. Don't necessarily know the number, but know this is a heavy mineral, this is a light mineral. Luster. It's the way it shines. It's the way it reflects light. Um, and there's like earthy, there's um, vitreous, means it shines like glass. That's something that's important for them to know because, again, it helps in your identification. You have something that's a certain color. Uh, how does it shine? What does it look like? And maybe one or two different things, depending on the way it reflects light back to you. So have them know those. Uh, crystal habit is what kind of crystals does this mineral like to form? What shape does it like to be? Calcite likes to be a rhombohedron. And that's one of the big distinguishing characteristics on calcite is that it forms a rhombohedron. Halite, which looks a lot like calcite, is a cube. So that's one of the things you can ask them to put it down. You put down all your white rocks, or, all, or like um, put down your gypsums, selenite, put these rocks out, and depending on the way they like to form, the way they like to look, they should be able to identify them just from that. A halite is a cube, rhombohedron, it's a calcite. So show them several minerals that look alike, and maybe the only difference is the way the crystal habit is. That's a good way to test them. Um, and color. Color sort of uh, is the least of the ways to identify things. Um, pink feldstar is always pink. But fluorite, it can be green, it can be blue, it can be clear, it can be yellow, halite, it can be different colors. So don't use color as a distinguishing characteristic for most of the minerals that you've got. Because it, it Changes. They can be a lot of things. They can be almost any color, some of these. Some of them are always the same color, but less than is helpful. That didn't make sense. You know what I meant. Okay, next one. Okay, so the rocks. It can be a sedimentary or metamorphic, metamorphic. I like to start them with the rocks and go in that order because you're starting from volcanic to sedimentary to rocks that have been altered when you get to the metamorphic. So I like to start with igneous because igneous are pretty pure. They come out of the ground, the lava hardens, and this is what you've got. Um, I like to start with rocks because they are, there are less things you have to know about each rock. You don't need to know about the streak because each rock is different and it won't streak the same. Uh, hardness varies on the composition of the rock because it's a percentage of certain minerals make a certain rock. So depending on where it falls on that list, it may not have the same number. It's not consistent across the brand. That's why it's kind of easier, I think, to start with rocks. There's less for them to know. Um, rocks are made of minerals. Again, depending on what you have, <coughs> how much quartz you have, how much biotite you have, uh, it changes what the rock is called. But there's a range that could fall into that specific rock. Okay, yeah, depending on where you find the minerals, what minerals are in it, it can tell you how it's more. Um, depending on where lava hardens, you get. Okay, this, this might be. 
Okay, so what happens is when you have magma or lava hardening, certain minerals fall out of solution at certain temperatures. So there are certain minerals that have a very, very high melting point, and when that lava or magma starts to harden, to cool, these will drop out of solution first. So depending on what percentage of what minerals you have, you can tell whether it was formed very quickly, uh, the depth that it was formed at, um, how long it cooled. So that will change the mineral, the rock you get by the way these things cool. But you don't need, I, don't, I think that's way more than you need to know. Just don't know the premise. Okay, next one. <clears throat> Okay, this year there's going to be fossils. Did we skip one again? No, we didn't. Okay. Fossils. We, he added four fossils this year. Um, for several reasons, but also because when you do, do a focus on sedimentary, a lot of these rocks, that's where you find <coughs> fossils. A, a lot of them have a lot of fossils in them. They're formed through sedimentary processes. So, fossil is either the remain or an impression of the remains of organic matter. Um, leaves, animals, whatever. It's the impression. Now, a mold. Okay. So, let's say we have, we have some mud down here and a brachiopod, a, sh a shell falls in here. And then, over time, it gets covered, it gets buried, and then it, is, it decays. Well, this usually happens more than this all. Anyway, you get something that decays. When you crack it open, the dent that's left from the impression, the impression, not the animal, but the impression of the animal, is the mold. If while this is happening and it's sandwiched in here and it becomes mineralized, and when you break it open, you have a mineral representation or a rock representation of the animal, that is a cast. So if you if you've got a dent from the animal, it's a mold, and if you've got the actual animal, it's a cast. Okay. Yeah, practice a lot. I mean, I don't have to tell you guys that. I mean, you know that. Um, weekly quizzes are good. What I do with a lot of kids is I have them make up the quiz to ask their partner, because sometimes I find when you teach, you learn easier. So if I tell them I want you to go, oh, for homework, I want you to go write five questions about igneous rocks and then ask your partner and then have the partner do it too. When they teach each other, I think it sticks better than just you talking to them. Um, have them make charts, have them make diagrams. What I do with them during the year is while we're practicing, I have them make a bunch of practice charts and then a couple weeks before, we settle on what their final chart is going to look like. But have them make a bunch of charts, any kind of chart they want. Um, if they want to classify things by hardness, have them classify things, just whatever they can do to get them again, to put their hands on them, and just go over it in your head. Because a lot of this stuff, it's just practice. It's just doing it over and over again. Some kids have, um, identification I find is more, it's almost like an art where some kids are like really, really good at it. I mean, they look at it and they see it and then it just clicks. Some kids, it's more learning that this, these things make this rock. And you'll just have to check your kids. It varies from kid to kid. Okay. All right, 20 stations. There will be about a minute in each station. They'll walk up to a station. The station will have a number on it. They open the lid. The 